the final Tuesday in the month of January, and that means it's once again time for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. AJ Bramer, live from the studios here on Telegraph Hill. And I am joined once again by Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace. Sheriff, thanks for coming on the show once again. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. It's my pleasure. It's so, always good to be here. Yeah, and happy to get another year of uh, Cop Talk underway. I'll tell you, they fly by. AJ, it's a, it's amazing. Uh, I've always told you, the older you get, the quicker time goes by, and boy, they went lying. So it, uh, Blake and I were, were through the year, aren't we? But uh, but we're off to a good start. Uh, you know, we had to deal with a, a couple of snow events here in the uh, community. Everybody uh, came through those very well. We were very fortunate to miss out on the uh, on the big one, right? Right. Uh, it went just south of us. Uh, we see what the folks to the east of us are dealing with. So uh, we were fortunate in that aspect. But uh, yeah, we dealt with the snow well. Uh, road crews did a did a fantastic job, and and uh, our drivers did an outstanding job. I think we maybe had like a dozen slide offs uh, through that event, uh, maybe a couple of fender benders, but but nothing serious. So uh, that's good. We're yeah. appreciative that the uh, that our motor republic. Uh, Heeds to the uh, warnings and uh, it breaks out their winter driving skills and, uh, and it, it went very well. Definitely, we uh, appreciate everybody you know paying attention as they head on the roadways and uh, you know being cautious out there. So it could have been a lot worse, but everybody seemed like you said everybody managed all right. Yeah, they did. And sometimes the uh, smaller snow events are more hectic than than the major ones. You know, they, when the major ones roll around, everybody prepares for days ahead of time. These right. uh, two or three inches that um, you know, the ice and the roads over really uh, sometimes create more havoc. So, uh, so we appreciate everybody's effort, uh, you know, state, local, and and, uh, and county efforts on uh, on removing the snow and uh, and our drivers for for heating to the mornings. So as we start the new year, well, what's new in the sheriff's office? Well, we just kind of wrapping up our uh, last year's stats and just kind of looking things over to see how our year went. Uh, everything went uh, very well. One thing I was uh, proud of, but not necessarily proud of, but uh, appreciative of the efforts uh, that the local law enforcement again put forth in the uh, in our battle against narcotics here in the community. Right. Our uh, drug arrest uh, went up again, our drug activity. And, uh, and we find when, when those go up, other stats go down. So so for the second year in a row, our drug activity, our drug arrests went up and our, our burglaries and thefts went down. So it just uh, indicates uh, number-wise what we what we always firmly believe that, uh, that all of our narcotics issues are, uh, directly relate to the um, burglary and theft and, and property crime issues. So as, uh, as we see those numbers go up, we should see the other ones go down, and, and that's the end of season we're seeing. So uh, I'm very uh, pleased and, and appreciative of the, of the effort that local law enforcement uh, in state uh, put into these investigations. It's uh, very time consuming, uh, very costly, but uh, you know, it's very, very important in our community that uh, we continue to do this. And, and we couldn't do it without the, without the help of our citizens. Uh, they play a vital role in, uh, in the information that they share with us and, and uh, getting some resolve in these cases. So we encourage and, and we ask that you continue to, to call us with your drug tips or activity information. Again, I always said if it's nothing, then so be it. But uh, maybe that tip or information we need to, uh, to get the ball rolling and resolve these issues. So, uh, so very appreciative uh, to everybody's effort, including our citizens. And like you said, it, it does seem that you know, the, the numbers do correlate with, like you said, where the drug problem is the root of a lot of different things that go on. So if you you attack that, you're going to take care of, as a as part of the domino effect, you'll take care of the other problems too. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, like I said we see that, uh, that work hand in hand. So a um, couple stats from the, uh, from the jail. Sure. Uh, actually, the average length of stay in our, in our county jail for an inmate is 28 days. Uh, some folks may not realize that, and that averages out to about uh, twenty-one dollars or twenty-seven dollars and thirty-one cents uh, per inmate uh, per day stay. So, as you can tell, that can that can add up in a hurry. It's, okay, it's yeah. costly, but uh, but it's like I said, it's very important. And uh, the courts and the prosecutors, uh, you know, they're doing they're doing a very good job on keeping people that need to be in jail there. Uh, you know, maybe the ones that uh, that can get out and, and hopefully. Uh, square themselves away, uh, get them out, and, and uh, get them on community corrections, or get them in some rehab programs, and, and hopefully get them going in the right direction. So, very pleased with the with the way that's working out. Our uh, average daily population for uh, 2015 was 102, compared to I believe 112 from the previous year. So, as you can see that's a, a trend, and you do the numbers, that makes a makes a significant difference. So, Certainly. Again, we're very appreciative of all the efforts, and, and it is a lot of effort to uh, to work these cases through and, uh, and uh, to get some resolve on this. Very thankful for all the help. Uh, and we, it looks like we are also joined today 
joining us. Just a little late, but that's we we appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, the city of Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston. Chief, uh, hey, we, we appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, better late than never. That's very true. That's excellent. So we were, uh, the sheriff and I were just talking about uh, some of the stats for the uh, the sheriff's office in 2015. How was uh, how was 2015 for the police department? Well, our call volume was up. We were up about 1,200 calls from uh, 2014. Um, the arrest maintained or actually fell just just a little, but uh, uh, I actually was listening to the show on the way up and, and heard what uh, the sheriff was talking about uh, as far as drug arrest. And I too am uh, proud of, of the joint effort that we have with the sheriff's department and the Madison Police Department in our drug investigations. And, uh, our narcotics cases also uh, were up, and as he uh, echoed, the uh, the uh, other property crimes and, and burglaries and thefts were down. So uh, we're seeing those same results from narcotics arrests and, and those uh, investiga investigations. And like you, you guys kind of touched on this, you know, the partnership that all it's it's not just one office. It's it's every, it's everybody together fighting the same problem. Right. It takes all of those resources. Uh, we don't have the manpower to do it alone at the Madison Police Department, and the Sheriff's Department doesn't have the manpower to fight their battles uh, as far as drug use on their own either. So, <clears throat> excuse me. It is a joint effort, and uh, both agencies are working extremely well together. Absolutely. Yeah. They, uh Pulled together, and uh, like I said, the drug activity doesn't stop at the city limits or at the county line. So, uh, you know, it only makes sense that we uh, pursue and uh, the drug dealers wherever they are and uh, enjoy our efforts and, and work together as one. I, I firmly believe the uh, citizens of this community expect us to do that, and uh, we have locked, knocked down a lot of barriers that uh, used to be in place that uh, that kind of it's my agency against yours. Those are those no longer exist. So. We're very, uh, very appreciative of the efforts that the that the officers put forward and, uh, and their willingness to work together. Say it before, say it again. Brown, brown or blue, they're working for you. That's it. That's right. <laughs> well, that is Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston joining us once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. The Cop Talk, the last Tuesday of each month here in our studios in Telegraph Hill. Don't go away. We'll be having a lot more with the Sheriff and the Chief after this on Works 96.7. Works 96.7 WLX. Good morning and thank you for tuning back in. It is Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. Last Tuesday of each month, we do Cop Talk. AJ Bramer here in studio, joined by Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and City of Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston. Now, Sheriff, we were talking during the break. Uh, something you want to get, you, you want to talk about a little bit was, um, you know, we always we have a lot of scams that go through the area, but there's another one in particular you, you guys want to talk about. Right, we do, and uh, and I think we harp on this probably every month, but I think we need to continue to do so. Right. Uh, recently, I met with a couple of, uh, of uh, senior groups, and uh, and found that uh, a couple of them had been victims of these of these phone scams and, and other scams. So, I just kind of want to reiterate and, and go over again that anytime you get a uh, phone call. That you're unable to identify without you know 100% who that is. You know, please don't give out any personal information because that's going to could very well be used uh, against you. The IRS scam is something that continues to keep going on. Um, you know, that is basically where you're going to get a call from a person that's going to end up being hostile towards you more than likely, saying you owe the federal government X amount of dollars and you either pay that now or they're going to come and arrest you. That's not true. That's not the way it works. It's not going to happen. So. Uh, you know, please be aware that that scam is going on. The old uh, grandson is in jail, or grandson's in a wreck uh, scam uh, has uh, reared its ugly head again. Basically, uh, you'll get a call from somebody that may sound like your, your grandson. There'll be a lot of background noise, a lot of confusion saying, hey, you need to send X amount of dollars. Uh, this is where I'm at. I've been involved in a wreck or, or I'm in jail. Um, you know, unfortunately, we've had some people uh, succumb to that uh, scam as well. The uh, secret shopper. Is something that's uh, that's been around uh, here recently, where uh, they'll uh, send you a check in the mail, uh, have you go cash that check, you spend X amount of dollars, and send the rest back to them. Those checks are bogus, and uh, a lot of times the banks have been doing a pretty good job on, on catching those. But uh, but just be aware, you know, if it's too good to be true, that it's too good to be true. It's not uh, it's not a uh, legitimate situation. And then the publisher's clearinghouse uh, scam, it's going to uh, it's going to make its way back. And uh, just remind yourself, I didn't even apply for it, so how, how am I winning? You know, or verify and verify three or four times because uh, that scam is uh, is something that uh, that's out there. And basically, what that is is, you know, you won a million dollars, but you have to pay us uh, uh, two thousand in taxes before we send it to you. you know, 
that's not the case. And then again, that is a scam as well. So just be aware. And if you're not sure, uh, you know, get a number, check with one of us, uh, you know, check with another uh, authority in the, in the community on these type of situations and, and verify. But please, whatever you do, don't give out that personal information and don't send any money to them because uh, once it's gone, more than likely it's gone for good. Uh, these people are generally out of the country and uh, no way of retrieving. So, so just verify and be careful. Chief, anything you like to add to that? No, uh, all of the uh, scams that the sheriff has mentioned, we're seeing the same uh, complaints, the same calls in the city. And um, as he has said, you know, it's it's really, really important to not become a victim of those crimes and really verify um, what is being offered, first of all, and to make sure it is a legitimate offer before uh, uh, sending any money to anyone. Right, and like uh, both the, the sheriff and the chief said, best thing you can do about those situations is just be aware, make sure you uh, know what you're doing. Like like the sheriff said, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It breaks your heart uh, to go talk to yeah. some, uh, some folks who are retired and, and living off a of fixed income and you know, save this money for their retirement and, uh, and uh, some low life individual come in and, and, and take it in that manner. So uh, uh, just please uh, you know, be cautious because we, uh, we don't want to see you fall victim to it. Yeah, that's another thing I think that, you know, just even if it doesn't seem like it's necessarily worth a call, some people may hesitate, you know, it's it's always worth a call to the police officer, the sheriff's department, just, you know, it's worth checking up on. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. They're very, like I said, they're very good at what they do, and they're very intimidating. Um, you know, I've made some visits to some people's homes to, uh, to calm them down from the, from the IRS scam because they really felt that law enforcement was coming out to, uh, to take them out of their homes. So, uh, again, like I said, they're very good and, and very demanding uh, what they do unfortunately so uh give us a call and uh and we'll assure you that uh, we'll check into it and we'll assure you everything's going to be okay uh stepping away from uh i guess bad news and stepping into something a little more positive uh, chief you wanted to update folks a little bit on the uh, school resource officers I, I just wanted to talk about uh how proud i am of, of sergeant jackson and, and deputy mcveigh and the job they're doing uh in our school systems um you know, it, it's one thing that they're there to uh, maybe enforce laws when things go wrong or um, um, take care of situations as far as lunchtime supervision and those types of things. But I think what really uh, has hit home with me with the school resource is the uh, relationship building that they're doing with children, uh, whether it's elementary school, middle school, or even at the high school. Uh, building those relationships, uh, letting kids understand that law enforcement is, is not the bad guy, we're not the boogeyman, we're here for them, we're here to help them, we're here to uh, assist them in any way possible with uh, educational things, um, um, away from school relationships, um, socially, anti-drug messages, all those types of things that, that law enforcement can provide. And, uh, again, I think Officer Jackson and Officer McVeigh are doing an outstanding job in that area. And, and I don't know that we'll see the results of that until maybe many years down the road um, as far as um, what the impact that they're making on our community. But uh, uh, I hear almost on a, on a daily basis what a good job that they're doing uh, in our schools and with our children. Yeah, definitely, like you said, having them there just for you know a safety, a safety reason obviously is good enough reason enough, but I think it is, you know, it's that, it, that image and that relationship building, that is what really, that's what really drives it home. I think that's what you'll see pay the dividends down the road. Right, and I think uh, for years there's been such a, a divide between children and the badge and, and what um, our youth think of law enforcement and what they think we actually do and, and what type of people they think we actually are. And they definitely are bridging that gap and, and uh, bringing us close, closer together with the youth. That, that's definitely something we like to see. Yeah, there's a lot of hurdles to uh, be jumped uh, to get this program going. Uh, the chief and I were, were in from the, uh, from the get go on this and uh, in the school system and took a lot of effort and uh, a lot of community involvement and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of sweat to get this uh, get this going. Uh, a lot of doubt, but everybody pulled together and, and, and got it done. And as the chief stated, uh, you know, it's probably be years down the road before we really see the benefits. And uh, and I should probably would add that we that we may never know or never see the actual benefits because the lives are going to be changed in a way that's going to be a positive and uh, and you know people are going to go on and live productive lives so um, uh, it does make a significant difference and as the chief stated the bonds that are built between the, uh, the uh, kids in the school and, their, and our resource officers uh, example I had a uh, little fourth grader come up to me one point and say you know I didn't like the police until I met Officer McVeigh and then I realized that uh, you know that you are our friends and you're there for us so uh, they'll say that's priceless you know so uh, 
those type of things are really, really care on a lifetime. So uh, again, we may never actually see or know the benefits, but but uh, but I can assure you they're going to be there. We appreciate your efforts. They do a good job. Definitely, it's it's good to see that program going Absolutely. so well. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Absolutely, that is. Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and City of Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston joining us once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. We'll be back with more here at our studios on Telegraph Hill on Works 96.7 WORX. AJ Bramer here in studio, back again for more Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. We do Cop Talk the last Tuesday of each month. Big thanks to Anderson for sponsoring the program, and big thanks to our guests. Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace and City of Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston. Always appreciate them coming on the show. It's always our pleasure, AJ. Oh, well, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy I get to have these moments with you guys. You know, <laughs> hanging out every morning. <laughs> I liked it better when the Packers were still uh, playing. And, 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 uh, but, uh, yeah. Well, that's, I think I think, work out so well. I think all our teams are out now. Oh yeah, we're just, yeah. Uh, we're just we're here for fun. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. But uh, Sheriff, you had talked about some uh, programs at the uh, at the county jail you'd want to talk about yeah i just said and i basically just want to sing the praise of, uh, of my staff at the jail that's uh, kind of the unsung heroes of, of law enforcement uh, when uh, when they're people put in jail obviously they're not happy about being there uh, they got a lot of issues to deal with and uh, they come in day in and day out and do just do an outstanding job and uh, also take on excuse me <clears throat> also take on the extra burden of uh dealing with a lot of the programs we've implemented at the jail as well uh these programs are uh, you know obviously a lot more work for the jail staff but uh, but we feel very important to uh, turn in our situation around here in the community with regards to narcotics and, and other issues that, uh, that these inmates are dealing with so um, again like I said the AANA programs we have in the jail uh, we do have uh, drug counselors in the jail and we have started uh, the school programs uh, within the facility so so you don't have your GED uh, you can work toward that in which we take inmates to uh, another facility to uh, to study once a week and uh, work hand in hand with uh, our local organizations to, to get that taken care of. So I just want to let the staff know and let the public know how, how dedicated and hardworking they are and, and how much I appreciate the, the efforts they, they undertake. It's, uh, it's a tough job. It's, uh, it's not an easy thing to have to deal with, but, uh, but they do a really good job and, and I appreciate it. And again, it's, you know, it's, it's a program that you anticipate, you know, the dividends paying off later down the road where, you know, you have some way that you know, falls into a bad situation and ends up in jail but you want them to have a positive positive foundation to build on once they get out well we do we want it to actually be some meaningful incarceration uh, like i said we do have life springs there as well to uh, to deal with any kind of uh, mental issues you may be uh, uh, dealing with or you know narcotics issues as well so as we've stated before we can't arrest our way out of our, our drug problems here in the community so we have to uh, we have to look outside the box and, and develop other other programs as well and now with level six uh, uh, conviction staying at the county jail could be up to 365 days that is a long period of time which we can take that period of time and hopefully uh, use it for something purposeful as uh, as uh, getting past your, your drug addiction or past the mental health issues or or uh, past the fact that you don't have your high school diploma or uh, you can get some college courses started so so we're hoping to uh, to take that time and, and turn it around and use it to, for something positive well just to echo off that one thing that i thought of as the sheriff was talking he was talking about the the dedication of his staff and and not only the jail staff but officers on the road you know we're just coming out of the holidays and um our profession is a 24-7, 365, so there are officers and, and jail staff and, and uh, people throughout law enforcement who are dispatchers, is another example, who are away from their families on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve or Thanksgiving Day, and, and we just uh, appreciate the the efforts that, that those people make and are willing to make the sacrifice maybe from their home lives, and a lot of people, I think, sometimes forget that, and uh, it's something that I, I think needs to be noted that we do appreciate the efforts from everyone everybody from again dispatchers jail staff and officers on the road for their efforts over the holidays it's a lot of people working together to create those you know more positive situations absolutely one other thing i may mention is uh handgun permits uh we are inundated with uh, with calls about uh, how do you obtain your handgun license and permit um, i think in uh, november last year we probably did our normal average of uh, 14 to 15 in december uh and bumped all the way up just about 100 so uh, uh, the interest in, in obtaining your handgun permit in Indiana is a uh, is a uh, huge question that uh, that we're receiving. Basically, just go online. It's all it's all done over the computer now. Obviously, uh, go on and just Google Indiana handgun permits, Indiana handgun license. It's going to walk you through the application process. 
once you've completed that, you'll get your fingerprints taken digitally here locally, and they'll explain, give you a number to call and set your appointment, which is every Wednesday. And if you live in the city limits, you'll come and see the chief. If you live in the county, you'll see me, and in the town of Hanover, you'll see Chief Kroger. So it's a uh, fairly a simple process. It's uh, $40 for a four year, or you can do a lifetime for $125. So uh, a lot of people have been, like I said, inquiring about that, and we have been inundated with, uh, with handgun permits. They, we're generally getting it back in two or three, four weeks, uh, you know, before the uh, rush uh, set in. But now it's take a little bit longer. But uh, that's the process you go through. If you do have any additional questions or concerns, uh, you know, you can give the chief and I a call, and we'll be glad to answer those questions for you. And definitely want people see people uh, go go through those avenues in the in the right way. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you certainly don't want to be off your property carrying a, a firearm without a without a permit. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, just go through the process if you choose to do that, and uh, it's, a, it's a fairly simple process, but if you do run into some uh, problems, give us a call. One other uh, issue that people have been, and I'm sure the Chief's been inundated with these questions as well, is firearm safety courses and programs. Uh, the city has done those in the past, uh, and I'd like to uh, partnership with them in the spring with some of my firearm instructors and, uh, and get those going additionally. So um, you know, I'm sure we'll have those advertised uh, very well, probably in the near future. Um, when those programs are going to be set up, but, uh, but those are very worthwhile as well. You certainly don't want to take on a handgun or possess a handgun if you're not familiar with how to use it or if you're afraid of it or whatever it may be because you may introduce a gun into a situation where one wasn't there before. So um, you know, if you do choose to uh, get your fire permit and carry a handgun, please be uh, you know, uh, cognizant of, of the, uh, how, to, how to operate that and, uh, and the dangers and safeties of it. So. Yeah, and then we don't have any dates set for those courses yet. Uh, however, I would assume uh, March or April as the weather turns and, and we can get outside uh, to the range to do that is, is when we'll look at it. If anyone is interested, they can call the Madison Police Department and get their name put on the list. We do have a waiting list right now. I say waiting list. We have a list of people who have expressed interest in that class. So once we have the date set, then we'll start going down the list and getting people called and registered for the class. Definitely have to see a... I'd like to see those things going on, you know, making sure people, again, going through the right avenues and uh, people are, you know, properly, properly trained know what they're doing. Absolutely, yeah. We certainly don't want any accidents. And, uh, and right. again, we don't want to get in a situation where one wasn't already there. So uh, uh, we definitely want you to be safe with it. And, and that's why we're going to you know, offer these courses. And, and I would say there probably be uh, more courses this year than last. Uh, as probably. The, as the need is there. So uh, as the chief stated, uh, you know, get that information out and, and weather breaks and we'll get them up and going. As we uh, looks like we're reaching the end of our end of our half hour set here, uh, uh, Chief Thursday. Anything else you'd like to add before we go? Uh, the only other thing, and it was kind of to echo off what the sheriff's talked about as far as a. Uh, um, positive uh, when, when people are released from jail and, and having a positive impact while they're in there. One um, aspect we've taken part of over the last year is a, is a group of people um, called an evidence-based decision-making team. Uh, it's everybody from uh, officers on the road at initial arrest through prosecutor's office, defense attorney, judges, community corrections, probation, life springs, a uh, lot of reparate parole, a lot of people involved uh, in this and, and we're trying to streamline our um, criminal justice process, how people are introduced to the criminal justice system, and then how they're eventually released. And the ultimate goal is to, to eliminate re-arrest. We want people to, to obtain the skills and, and uh, programs that they need while they're incarcerated so that when they are uh, released back into the general population that um, they're not going to be re-arrested. Uh, we've given them some skills that they can improve their lives. and So I, I'm really proud uh, to have been a part of that team and, and we'll continue to meet for the next three or four months to, to finalize our, our final product. So um, it, it's been a, a good experience for me and, and for the team as well. That's excellent. Uh, Sheriff, anything else? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just to uh, echo that and, and say I am very proud to be a part of that team as well. And uh, there's been a lot of effort put forth into uh, into this program. It's uh, again outside the box type thinking. Uh, it's, a, it's a change in the way we've always done things. Um, so we're excited about to see what the results are going to be. But uh, but we feel very good that they're going to be positive. That's excellent. Well, Sheriff John Wallace and Chief Dan Thurston, once again, uh, thank you guys so much for uh, coming on the program. Looking forward to uh, another year cop talk. Very good. Thanks for having us. Our pleasure, AJ. Thank you. That is Madison Police Chief Dan Thurston <coughs> and Jefferson County Sheriff John Wallace, of course, joining us once again for Cop Talk, brought to you by Anderson Sales and Services. Big thanks to the Chief. Big thanks to the Sheriff. Big thanks to Anderson's. And big thanks to you, the listeners, for tuning into the program today. We'll be back next month for more Cop Talk. Until then, stay tuned to Works 96.7 WORX.